We'd like to discuss what is sleep-related breathing disorders, how to identify this condition, evaluating the underlying root cause, and treatment with the Healthy Start treatment. Healthy Start's mission is to provide better health as we expand your practice. So I'd like to start right away. We have a lot of material. Um, please, if you have any questions, please ask them. Um, we'll probably hold questions to the end and um, we'll go through the material. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and um, listen to probably one of the most exciting, dynamic aspects of where dentistry is heading to. So let's start with what exactly is sleep-related breathing disorder? And understanding that um, it's been sometimes coined as um, sleep disorder breathing, um, the ADA has now implemented a new policy that was approved in October, and it basically is requiring every dentist to evaluate airway as well as improper growth and development. So when we look at these, how do, how do we know? How do we know if a child is struggling? Well, fortunately, there are some outward signs that are very helpful for a parent as well as a dentist, orthodontist, pediatric dentist, hygienist, even a pediatrician to be able to identify and put the dots together so they understand that these might be outward symptoms of something that's more serious underlying um, within the child's own oral cavity. Um, I'd like to mention one thing before we get started is, you know, so many times um, we have this discussion, um, only MDs can diagnose sleep issues or sleep apnea. And a dentist, an orthodontist, a pediatric dentist can treat it. Well, um, we have that situation and it's probably here for a while. Um, and I feel that it's a good opportunity for us to collaborate in this effort. But I also think it's a really good opportunity for us as dental professionals to evaluate ourselves and decide if maybe we're more oral physicians than we are dentist or orthodontist or pediatric dentist. So just a thought to carry yourself or think in the back of your mind as we're going through this discussion. So let's get back to what the outward symptoms are that we can identify and help a parent understand what we're talking about as well as realizing that there might be other underlying symptoms occurring in a child. So looking at these lists, I mean, it's quite extensive. Everything from ADD, ADHD, bedwetting, um, interesting enough difficulty in schools, specifically in the areas of math, science, and spelling. Tooth grinding, how many times do parents walk in and tell you about how horrific the sound is that their child makes when they're sleeping, when they grind their teeth? Um, another one that was kind of a little bit shocking to me was the chronic nightmares and night terrors. And um, a child, as we'll discuss, um, with sleep issues where they're not getting enough oxygen, um, they tend to have nightmares or night terrors rather than dreams. So that's something that's interesting. Another one that we find quite prevalent is headaches, especially morning headaches. Um, bedwetting, we'll talk about, it's much more prevalent than you'll ever have imagined, especially in older age children. So interesting enough, nine out of 10 kids suffer from one or more of these symptoms. And what's so unfortunate is that it many times goes undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. And so often do parents look at maybe individual symptoms that we see on the screen and they address them in a variety of different ways. Um, many times it becomes um, psychi um, psychiatric testing. We look at surgery. We look at sleep studies. Many times, more than often, it is um, addressed with drugs. So especially ADD and ADHD, it seems like it's almost in epidemic proportions. How many drugs children are given in order to basically combat um, a diagnosis of ADD and ADHD. 
Um, we also see that maybe allergies also go along with that. And pretty soon we've talked to children, even as young as three years of age, where the child's on four different medications. So I'm not sure in many instances if the medications is really a cure or possibly a Band-Aid. So when we look at these conventional treatments, we, we're only addressing the symptom not the root cause. And more often than not, these remedies seem to be short-term Band-Aids, and they involve um, often many s drugs, several drugs, and with these drugs come many side effects. And unfortunately, all of them seem to be costly, painful, time-consuming, and most of the times ineffective. So over the past 20 years, um, we have been able to link these outward symptoms to the root causes, and they include mouth breathing, a narrow palate, improper tongue placement, and jaw relationships. So we always tell a dental professional, or what I like to call you is oral physicians, have the knowledge and the tools to impact the development of the airway to increase the oxygen intake and reduce carbon dioxide buildup. So let's see what now is far more than cavities and straight teeth. It's really about the overall future health of every child that we see in our practice. So today, as I discussed before, we'd like to identify the sleep disorder breathing symptoms, or as ADA has now coined, sleep-related breathing disorder. We're going to evaluate these symptoms. We're gonna understand and identify the root cause, diagnose the problem, and more importantly, be able to treat. So let's talk about the child that walks into your office. Are there outward signs before a child even gets into your chair, before you even provide a parent with a sleep questionnaire? Absolutely. So take a look at these two children. Obviously, look at the circles under their eyes. Look at their position of their mouth. The boy on the, uh, excuse me, the boy on the right has his lips separated. I can tell you right now, he's probably a mouth breather. Look at the way they position their head. I mean, the girl on the left, wow, that would be a scary sight. <laughs> take a look at these other, take a look at their profiles. If you notice the girl on the left, you'll see that she has um, a very um, diminished or um, deficient lower third of the face. The chin is basically positioned back in the face. It has not been allowed to develop fully. Um, lips are parted, more than likely she's a mouth breather. The child on the right actually has what we call a funnel look, meaning that the chin and the neck blend into each other. You can see the part, um, the position of the lips again, and we can see a rolled lip. These are all really important aspects to start identifying in a child. So if we look at these and identify them, what are we looking for? And what are the root causes? And we we're going to speak specifically about mouth breathing, which is probably one of the number one habitual problems with children that are expressing and experiencing both sleep and breathing issues. So with the mouth breathing, it's allowing the mandible and the tongue to displace posteriorly, causing a reduced airway and air exchange to lungs. Habits can be finger sucking, tongue position, improper swallow. These all contribute to the problem, as well as upper arch constriction, a high palate, um, both of those can be a result of more um, use of a bottle, pacifier, even thumb sucking will cause that suction in the upper arch in order to constrict, as well as the high palate then being created and basically decreasing nasal breathing. Um, with this and the reduced amount of oxygen, we see reduced REM sleep, which obviously affect the brain, endocrine, and immune systems. So REM sleep requires more oxygen, and with mouth breathing, we are not getting as much oxygen, and we'll start talking to you a little bit about how that occurs. 
So an important thing, um, obviously we're looking at children. Um, we can treat any patient up to, our oldest patient is age 84. But when we're looking to be as proficient as possible in creating a new normalcy for this child, being able to promote growth and development, to change these habits, we're most effectual during the ages from two to 12. And the reason being is because of the craniofacial growth. So when we look at a, a child, we realize at age two, 68% and 73% of the cranial facial growth has occurred. So that is a considerable amount. And you can see up until age 12, we're basically almost completed in our cranial facial growth. Another important aspect is to see the direction of growth. So as we're looking at the oral cavity, we can see that that directional growth is a forward and down position. And that is exactly what we try to reproduce when we're using these appliances. So why are so many of these children experiencing normal growth or not experiencing normal growth, as well as social and personality developments? Well, we can go back and look and see what has been occurring since industrialization. We see more soft diet rather than hard diet. We see a prolonged use of pacifiers. Um, tendency is longer than six months. We see more bottle feeding, um, lack of breastfeeding, soft diet. Um, I, I'm sure you've seen all these snacks. Um, I was actually in Hawaii at a course and I saw a mom giving her child veg, veggie chips that melted in your mouth. I'm like, well, it was a good effort with the veggies, but I'm not sure about the softness of the diet. So let's look what happens when we use prolonged um, pacifier and bottle use. You can see these open bites. You can see these tongue thrusts. What happens if we have an open bite? Usually the tongue lays low and the mouth is open, so we tend to mouth breathe rather than nasal breathe. When we look at the airway, we understand the navel, nasal cavity. We understand hard palate and soft palate and the relationship of the tongue and where the tongue needs to be. So let's, let's talk about the function of the nose. Um, it's a completely undervalued um, area of the face. We don't talk about it very much, and it's really important to understand the purpose and what it serves for any human being in the health of their life. So the no nose has five functions. It serves as the air passageway. It warms and moistens inhaled air. Um, it is a mu mucous membrane that traps dust, pollen, bacteria, and other foreign matter. Um, it contains receptors that sort out odors, aids in phonation and the quality of voice. So when we are mouth breathing, we're basically not utilizing the nose as it should be. Um, we tend to see a lot more um, bacteria, um, infections. Um, tendency is you'll hear, oh, my child has a ton of air, uh, um, strep throat. And thinking about it, when we breathe through our nose, that nose is able to filter out that bacteria and bring moisturized air into the body. When you mouth breathe, you eliminate all of that function and air is brought directly into the oral cavity and the adenoids and the tonsils are basically irritated with the bacteria that come in in that way. So the nose is absolutely a very vital um, area that needs to be discussed during sleep and breathing issues. So improper air exchange. Um, the most common problem of air exchange to and from the lungs um, is due to nighttime breathing. Actually, we see in a sample of 500 children that 43% of those children actually mouth breathe. Um, it is much more common. Um, typically, we'll hear parents say something to the effect, well, no, my child doesn't mouth breathe, but they snore. Well, there's only one way you can snore, and that is if you mouth breathe. But if you don't hear snoring, it does not mean that you are not mouth breathing. 
So um, sometimes I think the word snoring is an improper terminology. It's really, if you can hear a child breathe, then they're breathing through their mouth. That is not a good sign. So um, when we talk about snoring, sometimes parents think, wow, it's like my grandfather. He used to snore and take the shutters off the house. We're really talking about if you can even hear a child breathe. So when we look at children that maybe are mouth breathers or have various different habits, um, we realize that 92.6% of them will not improve during their lifetime. That's a, that's a huge statistic. And actually, we'll discover later that 30% of them get worse. So it's a really important area that we need to address at an early time before the habit becomes too ingrained and we're able to provide the proper habits for them. And we'll discuss how we do that with the habit corrector and the Healthy Start treatment. So this is Eli. Um, this is a really excellent um, indication of a child that is obviously having difficulty breathing. But what I want you to notice is how the mom is able to bring the lower jaw forward in order to eliminate this difficulty in breathing. And this is kind of one of the concepts that the Healthy Starts utilizes in their treatment. So take a listen. Now he's holding it. That was holding it. He's still holding it. He's trying to take in air. There he goes. And now watch. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's still holding his breath. And now he's going to gulp again. There he goes. That was it again. And again. He's holding. He's holding. He's trying. There he goes. So this has been three minutes and 15 seconds. And you can see how many episodes he's had of not getting calm breaths in. Now watch what happens when I take his jaw and I just bring it forward. If I can, let's see if I can. And I open his airway. Just bring his airway forward. his airway, I'm opening his airway, just pulling his jaw forward ever so slightly. And now he's breathing through his nose quietly. His mouth is a little bit open, but he's breathing through his nose. Just by hear how quietly he's breathing, you don't hear him anymore. And all I did is gently bring his jaw forward. So how amazing is that? So, so much of our conversation goes on airway. So let's take a few minutes to talk about airway and what this means. Many times you hear um, doctors say, well, they have a constricted or a restricted airway. So look at the slide on the left. You'll see a five-year-old and you can see, yes, obviously that airway is constricted. And if you wanna know, okay, let's, evaluate it compared to a normal airway, you can see the one on the right and you can see the difference. What's interesting is when we look at a child in a vertical position, we find that approximately 21% will have a constricted airway just in a vertical position. However, that does not necessarily mean that they're, if they have a normal airway, they're gonna be breathing normally at night. Because what happens is if a child basically is in a horizontal position or sleeping, the muscles relax. And when the muscles relax, they actually will um, tend to close the airway. So we tend to see um, habitual problems or um, breathing problems 
due to habitual problems, meaning that the child is mouth breathing or sleeping and the lower jaw is drifting backwards. So I'm going to skip over that and just talk about this. So if a child opens their mouth by a half an inch, as similar to mouth breathing on the right, the airway can be constricted up to six millimeters. So that means a child who is of age, maybe seven years of age, will basically have an airway about seven millimeters. And by simply mouth breathing, we can restrict that airway down to one millimeter. Well, that means that that child will be breathing all night long, trying to get enough air through a one millimeter airway. So that's where the harm comes in. And that's why we always talk about mouth breathing as being so critical for a child's ability to breathe through the night. So that is one of the areas that we are always looking at to make sure that we're identifying. So this, this is an interesting. We also can do CBCT scans. Um, it's a very expensive piece of equipment. Um, obviously, it's, it's a wonderful piece of equipment, but again, just like a Ceph, it is taken in a vertical position. So we are actually looking at constriction in the development of a child, as opposed to possible constriction as a result of um, mouth breathing or sleeping or um, the drifting of the lower chin in the rear position. So we have looked at different CVCT scans, and what's interesting about this is we have on the left um, a child that was actually nine years of age, and how we identify or um, consider the airway size is we take the age of the child starting at age five, we multiply it by 10 to get their square millimeter diameter. So this child on the left being nine years old should have had a 90 square millimeter airway. As you can see, it was 53.6, which is obviously constricted and less than you would optimally want to see. So this child was actually started with the Healthy Start system um, and the first appliance, which is called the Habit Corrector. And one month afterwards, we took a second CBCT scan with the appliance in the mouth to see what kind of airway expansion we were getting. And with this, we found that this child that was one month prior at 53.6 was 337 square millimeters. Well, what's so dynamic about this is obviously we've increased it six times, but in the airway development, at age 17, an adult will basically peak, and a typical airway measurement would be between 150 and 170 square millimeters. And unfortunately, at age 21, we start um, uh, eliminating airway. Um, and we see that that diminishing airway occurs for the rest of their life. So now, what happens if we are now at an airway at 337 square millimeters? That's almost double what we would anticipate in an adult. So it is a very interesting concept that is being um, studied and researched right now to determine what kind of um, long-term results we can see from this and how this will impact growth and development and the aging process for a um, individual and hopefully your patient. So it's an exciting new concept that I just wanted to make note and um, kind of explain a little bit about the CBCT scan at the same time. So again, um, we're looking at airway. So how do you describe an airway to a parent? It's it, We want to be able to give them kind of tools to help them understand what their child is dealing with. And sometimes comparing an airway to a coffee stir versus a garden hose. I don't know if you've ever taken a coffee stir. I decided that one day I was going to try to make it through the entire day breathing through a coffee stir. Well, I made it maybe a half hour. And I'll have to tell you, I had the most massive headache I have ever had. I tried Excedrin. I tried, I could not get rid of that headache. 
So if I try to think of a child that has a reduced airway, say one of these mouth breathers, and they're trying to breathe through that coffee stirrer, no wonder they wake up with these headaches. So it's, it's just a really good visual to help explain what this is like. And obviously our goal is to create a garden hose for the child rather than a coffee stirrer. So let's kind of go through what the whole scenario is and how we go around and talk about mouth breathing, compromised airway, and sleep disorder breathing. So obviously mouth breathing, snoring. Um, we find that this can occur um, because of extended bottle feeding, pacifier use. It causes poor tongue position, abnormal swallowing. Um, it could also have um, been a result of processed food, maybe soft diet, poor or oral habits such as thumb, finger sucking. Um, I will mention that the tongue, the position of the tongue should be in the upper palate. When you say the letter N, where that sound ends is where your tongue should be positioned. What's interesting is if it is up there in the palate of the mouth, there is only one way you can breathe and that is through your nose. So that's part of the reasoning of where that tongue position comes from and then giving you the proper breathing. So if the mouth breathing and the storing does occur, then what happens? We find we have a compromised airway. And what does it mean if you have a compromised airway? Well, obviously we're gonna reduce the airway, we're gonna restrict airflow, we're gonna reduce oxygen, increase CO2, which in essence affects brain function, immune, endocrine systems. Um, we tend to see more swollen adenoids and tonsils. Um, the tongue is positioned in um, the lower portion of the mouth. We see tongue thrust, underdeveloped dental arches, um, overjet, open bites, cross bites. All of these basically are a result. And what we call the outward symptoms that result from a compromised airway, it's sleep disorder breathing. And as we said before, and what we've addressed is there are a variety of different outward symptoms. Some of them include restless sleep, ADD, ADHD, bedwetting, chronic allergies, and we can go through there. So let's talk a little bit about Healthy Start. That's what we're here about. So we can talk about this condition and try to understand it. Obviously, we are always finding new research that comes out to help further educate ourselves on this condition. But we realize that we identify it, we see it, now what can we do? How important is it to implement and to provide a treatment for your patients? So let's look at a healthy start and what healthy start does to address the root cause. So the healthy start appliances will expand the arches. We will find that half of your cases will have an impacted um, or a diminished arch. Um, we find that the habit corrector is applicable for 77% of these cases. We can expand the arches up to four millimeters and sometimes more depending when we catch them. Um, we establish nasal breathing. The appliances prevent the mouth breathing, encourages the nasal breathing, which then obviously will help and encourage REM sleep. Um, it will also um, prepare air for optimal assimilation by the lungs. So it filters, warms, and moisturizes. The appliances actually have myofunctional therapy built within each and every appliance. So as the child swallows, it will train the tongue. It will strengthen it. It will reposition the tongue up in the upper palate where we had talked about the letter N. We promote proper swallow and speech. We prevent proper prevent proper tongue, or we encourage proper tongue position and swallowing. Um, we eliminate bad habits such as thumb sucking, tongue thrust, reverse swallow, eliminate open bites, um, advancing the mandible. We basically promote growth and development. We also encourage the maxilla as well. So we have different appliances that are used to do this, but it all advances it in a forward and down position. Also, the appliances prevent the mandible from slipping back as well as we see many times with mouth breathing. Um, we encourage proper facial and body growth. Um, because of the lack of REM sleep, we find that we are lacking in growth horm hormones. And with the use of the Healthy Start system, we see the children make a huge jump in growth. And it's basically because we're putting their body back into balance and we're allowing the REM sleep to occur. 
Um, other instance is we correct many orthodontic problems. Um, we correct any overbite, overjet. Um, we allow for the perfect and proper intercuspation of the dentition, um, the molar relations to a class one. All 28 teeth are in proper place by the age 12. We provide fiber development on straight teeth for stability. So as the teeth are developing, those fiber bundles are developed and we have a more permanent result. Um, and we reduce the chance for orthodontic treatment later on. So there was an interesting article and research that was done on sleep. It was done on 500 children, and we looked at children from the ages of two to 19. Um, what they used was a sleep questionnaire. It's the Healthy Start Sleep Questionnaire. That is an excellent tool. It's probably one of the best tools you'll have because it will um, identify and help a parent realize um, the 27 most prevalent symptoms or outward symptoms of sleep. And we ask the parent to identify the severity of the sleep from zero to five. We do know that as we look at these symptoms, some of them become more prevalent um, than um, others. We also know, for instance, mouth breathing, 48% or 43% of the children will mouth breathe. Um, we realized that nine out of 10 children had one or more symptoms. 60% um, of the sample had four or more symptoms. What is interesting to me is one out of five children experience bedwetting. That's actually 18.7% at a later age. So it's an important concept to realize that if you look at a classroom of 20 children, four of them will be bedwetting. And understanding what that does for a child's personality, um, socialization it's a very very hard situation and it obviously not talked about very much so when we do see this we are um, always very careful how we describe it but more importantly um, there might be an answer to why this child is bedwetting and obviously what's more important is there might be a treatment for it so anyways between ages 4 to 12 we see that 92.6% of the symptoms did not self-correct, while 30% worsened with age. So if you want to take a look through here, um, these are interesting statistics. As you see, mouth breathing is 43%. But um, sometimes we don't realize how prevalent certain symptoms are. And this study basically helped us really identify and understand a little bit more um, about the prevalences of a lot of these conditions. Um, we also um, took a look at most frequent symptoms found in children who mouth breathe during the day and night. So you can see um, many of these difficulty listening, talks while sleeping, fidgets with hands, teeth grinding. So you can take a look at these. And what we always like to remind a doctor is when you're looking at a sleep questionnaire, if you do find a child who does mouth breathe, you will see that there's typically eight other symptoms. So sometimes a parent might not even be aware that there are other symptoms there. But I would just be really um, cautious and really um, vigilant about looking for these other symptoms, knowing that there will probably be um, eight other symptoms um, that might be present. So what are the implications of this study? Um, the findings show that sleep disorder breathing is much more common and affects children as early as even two years of age. Actually, we have seen studies that have actually shown sleep issues in children that are not even born yet in vitro, where we see that, um, that there's some thumb sucking, their mouth breathing. Um, tendency is if a, a mother is having difficulty with sleep, say that they're mouth breathing, maybe they have sleep apnea. Um, what do you think is happening to the unborn fetus? Obviously, it is not getting the oxygen that it needs. Um, we'd like to treat as early as possible to ensure more permanent results. Um, identifying outward symptoms um, ten tended to see to be in 90% of the children that enter your practice. So sometimes we say they are a healthy start patient unless proven otherwise. Um, this was a very interesting study that when we look at what 
what role sleep plays in basically um, REM sleep, but in brain function as well. So the top three slides are basically an MRI of normal brain function with normal sleep. The second set of three images is basically brain function with one night of sleep deprivation. I see one red dot here, but typically, I mean, this is, this is a really serious situation. And being able to um, identify or show a parent basically how difficult it is for a child who is not getting the right amount of sleep, more importantly, the right quality of sleep, um, to be able to function and to be able to have that reparative sleep to make each and every day um, productive for them. So less REM sleep interferes with the removal of intracellular brain toxins, such as beta amyloid. Um, obviously, this is a very interesting study that kind of links dementia and Alzheimer's to what we see um, with individuals that have little or no REM sleep. So as we work, or as our day goes by, we find that the brain cells will expand and toxins will build up in the fluid around the um, brain cells. At night when we go into REM sleep, the reparative sleep that we need, those brain cells shrink and those toxins are removed. And then we are obviously fresh for the day. Well, if a individual does not get into REM sleep, obviously, due to lack of oxygen, those toxins are never removed and they tend to build up over time. And that's where we see this link to dementia and Alzheimer's. So this was a very interesting study. Um, we talked a little bit about the plaque um, that we find in Alzheimer's, um, the beta amyloid. Um, there was another study done out of Penn, three consecutive nights of four to five hours of sleep can cause irreversible irreversible brain cell damage, um, a Harvard study about antibodies. One night of incomplete sleep can affect the endocrine and the immune system that was done out of Harvard. Um, you can see, I can go down, you can read this as well, um, but you can see that there are many studies relating what the effect of lack of sleep, lack of oxygen does on the brain, endocrine, and the immune systems. So now let's talk a little bit about sleep disorder breathing and ADD and ADHD, which is obviously a very hot topic. I mean, I don't, I, it's almost of epidemic proportions. Um, I'm sure we all realize that more and more children seem to be on medication, more and more children are being diagnosed with ADD and ADHD. But what I will have to say, what is very interesting is that when we look at the criteria that is used to diagnose ADD and ADHD, which we all know is a set of criteria that is evaluated as opposed to a blood exam, a blood test, excuse me, um, compared to sleep and how we evaluate. Interesting enough, they both use the set, same set of criteria. So can it be misdiagnosed? Probably, more than likely. Um, and we find that actually a recent study was conducted and they found that 86% of the children with ADD and ADHD had sleep issues. So looking at some of these other studies that we've seen, um, Bonnick is one that has um, a huge, oh, 13, over 13,000 participants and found that there's increased risk of ADD and ADHD by at least 50% with children with sleep disorder breathing. Um, ADD and ADHD patients have little or no REM sleep. They have mostly delta sleep. Delta sleep does not require as much oxygen as REM sleep. Patients without ADD or ADHD have primarily REM sleep and delta sleep. So we can see the difference in those two. Um, in the study that was just presented, we found that 25.2% of the cases, um, the parent indicated ADD and ADHD was present. Um, I'm always so discouraged when I see this statistic, but long-term effects of um, ADD and ADHD, we see that 50% of the children that have been labeled with ADD and ADHD have been held back one grade. 30% have been held back two grades. Um, unfortunately, if a child was misdiagnosed and was really suffering from sleep 
or sleep-related breathing disorders, it doesn't matter if you hold them back 10 grades. They're still going to have the same situation as they have. You aren't addressing the problem. You're just putting a Band-Aid on it. And unfortunately, this is a very poor Band-Aid for those specific types of children. So now let's talk about a little bit about bedwetting. Bedwetting is an interesting one that um, the research shows that basically the bedwetting is related to an imbalance in the body. And this imbalance occurs from, you know, affecting the brain, the endocrine, immune system, as well as the hormonal. And within the hormonal, we have basically um, bladder um, dysfunction that can occur. So we want to make sure that the body is in balance and by putting them into the right position with the right habits, breathing through their nose, we have found that the bedwetting has ceased, sometimes in the first night when they wear it. So the first appliance that the child wears when they start with the Healthy Start system is called the habit correctors. Now, the Healthy Start system has now been used in over three and a half million cases worldwide. Um, as you know, our appliances are FDA approved. There's no latex, no plastimize, plasticizers, um, BPA free, phthalate free, no silicone. We are extremely cautious, concerned um, to make sure that every appliance that we manufacture is to the highest grade possible. We regulate our appliances to a class two medical device. We don't need to do that, but we want to ensure the safety and um, make sure parents and providers realize that we consider this a primary concern. So let's look at the system. Um, it's, it's a very easy way to get started. Um, it's pretty, um, uh, we try to make it as simple as possible. So when you look at ages children, we'll be able to correlate the proper system that will be utilized for that patient. Obviously, sometimes children mature faster than others, some mature later, but we can work around that. So we start, the first appliance that we start with is the toddler, and it, it will be for an age two to four. Now, if your patient comes in and they're at age, say, nine years of age, we'll go into the preteen section, and we will start with the habit corrector as the first appliance, and then we'll do the G appliance as the second. So you can kind of see where we go with these different appliances. Um, the habit corrector is a very, um, will always usually be the very first appliance that we use. And the reason being is because we're going to address the habits. We're going to look at tongue thrusting, abnormal swallow habits, mouth breathing, um, low tongue position, open bites. These are all the areas that we're going to address. And the child typically wears this just passively at night when they sleep. Um, the appliance will basically put the tongue in the right position. It's gonna elevate it into the roof of the mouth. Um, the tongue tip, the tip will be behind the rugae. The teeth will part with three to four millimeters of freeway space. Um, and it will encourage nasal breathing and the lips will be closed. What is abnormal and what we are trying to correct is looking at the tongue in the lower arch. Um, we see the tongue between the incisors, lips parted, mouth breather, open bite. So typically, when we see a patient come into the office, we wanna see how they swallow, where that tongue is. Have them take a sip of water. When they take a sip of water, watch to see how their um, swallow occurs. If you, you should see, as they take the glass of water, only their neck muscles move. If you see them making squinch, pursing their lips, these are all indications the tongue is not in the right position and obviously the swallow is not correct. Um, what makes these habit correctors work where the myofunctional therapy is built in? You can see there's a ramp here for the tongue. The tongue is lifted and it is lifted to the palate of the mouth. There are two prongs here. The prongs basically prevent the tongue thrust. At the same time, we have these vertical expanders. And what this does is we have the tongue, we ask the patient to push against these walls, and it is actually beginning the expansion of the upper arch. At the same time, maybe think of it as the tongue finding its own parking space. 
So many times these very constricted arches prevent the tongue from resting up. So we're actually using the most powerful muscle we have in our body, the tongue, in order to create the expansion, in order to have the tongue be positioned in the upper palate. As the child swallows, this will activate the myofunctional therapy. So during the day, the child swallows two times a minute. At night, we swallow one time a minute. So if the patient only wears the appliance at night, we see that eight hours of sleep would allow 480 swallows. So you can imagine the repetition that occurs and how quickly these habits are changed and the improper habits are created. So it's a very clever, unique um, way of treating these children and understanding and relying on the appliance to do so much of the work, even when the child is sleeping. So what do we look for when we see a child when they come in? So let's look, symptoms we're looking for, anterior open bite. Why? Because we know they're probably mouth breathers. We know they have a tongue thrust. thrust. We know that tongue is not in the right position. It's probably laying low. We look at tongue thrust. Again, you can see the tongue out there. We look for excessive overjet, minimum overbite. Even if they have severe overbite, we can take care of that as well. Look for the flared upper incisors. It could be a tongue thrust. It could be a finger sucking situation. Um, another one is look for separation of the teeth. Look for the um, uh, anterior teeth to be positioned in a forward direction. Also look for constricted maxillary arches. Obviously, we know constriction means the tongue isn't laying where it should. Um, they're going to have a hard time with their bite. Um, we need expansion for that and probably not being able to nasal breathe as well. Um, also look for a mandibular displacement um, to one side showing possibly a cross bite. Um, you can look to see if the midlines are in line or if they're not. We can address that as well. Also look for lingually inclined lower incisors. Um, could be an indication of a thumb sucker as well. Um, or a lip that is curled underneath that is causing that. Um, also, we look for large freeway spaces, um, lateral tongue thrust, um, and it usually is um, with an extreme overbite. Um, we talked about the rolled lip. When we see a child with a rolled lip, um, we understand, obviously, what's inside, but also what the position and the lack of growth that has occurred in the lower third. But if we have her open her mouth, this particular child, as we see, has a severe overbite and an overjet. And what is happening is the rolled lip is preventing those teeth and encouraging them to basically um, enlarge that overjet tendency. As you can see, we talk, we can see what the progress is of that case. Um, we are looking for development of the dentition as well as correcting the overjet and the overbite symptoms. Here's a child, let's look at their breathing. As we talked about before, look at this child and his lack of development. You can see how the chin rolls into the neck. Um, we can see that there is probably a severe overjet in this case. Um, we look at the airway. The airway is obviously constricted. Um, this child is um, 10 years of age um, and we are looking at him as he develops. You can see we have created a jaw line. You can see the definition of the jaw. You can see the improvement of the profile. But let's look at the airway. We can see a dramatic change within that airway. Um, let's quickly go through some case studies. It's always fun to take a look. Let's see what we have. Um, we have, um, I just want to make mention, I believe. Dr. Marino is one of the 300 that are on tonight. Um, he is a absolute wonderful orthodontist, a wonderful um, person. Um, I've had the pleasure to know him for almost 30 years. And he um, has treated many, many children with this technique. Um, here is one child, one of his practice. What's interesting is um, this daughter's this um, young lady's mother is um, basically had had surgery. She had had many of these same symptoms as she could see in her younger child. 
and obviously did not want the same. So let's take a look at her dentition. You can see she has a severe deep overbite. She has an overjet. She has crowding. Um, you can see the lack of space that she is um, seeing. Now, here she is as she is going through treatment. You can see the dramatic difference. Let me just show you prior and now. Quite a major change. You can see, look at the arch. You can see how it has created space. What happens is as the teeth are erupting, these Healthy Start appliances will actually capture that tooth. It will make sure it is erupted in a proper and straight position. It will put natural pressures on the adjacent teeth in order to expand the arches and allow the dentition to basically be able to erupt and the arch to develop to accommodate the other incoming teeth. We can see her as she is going through. You can see her um, as she is aging. There is no relapse. Look at the beautiful dentition. And you can see her continuing. Beautiful case, Tony. Here is another five-year-old. Um, this child had many um, habitual problems. Um, she was a uh, thumb sucker, um, uh, severe overjet, as you can see. This is where she started out at age five. This is her at age seven. And here is her at 13 years age. You can see the change in the profile. You can see the change in the dental and orthodontic condition. And you can see the eruption of the teeth, how they were put in. Look at the beautiful intercuspation of the teeth. Another eight-year-old, um, you can see the severe overjet, obviously probably a tongue thruster, I am sure, a curled lip. Um, this is the child wearing the appliances. You can see him. This took one year, less than a year, to correct. And then this is him at 14 years of age and the stability of the case. Um, here's another child starting at almost 10 years of age. Um, uh, mandibular advance, uh, advancement, it's a severe overjet, flared incisors. You can see as the case treated out, here's at 11. Here is him um, post retention at 25, and you can see the stability. Interesting, this patient actually had a double lateral incisor. So the appliance is able and the treatment is able to adapt for different peg laterals, missing teeth. There are different conditions that we can accommodate as well. Um, here's a frontal view of that same case. You can see how we go through treatment. Here is the profile as he goes through. Here is a 12-year-old, a little bit older, but you can see how the treatment was. This child wore the appliance. You can see how it was able to expand, um, make those changes, accommodate the dentition, and at 15 years of age, you can see where he is. Um, here is another um, case. This was just um, no brackets or wires. Actually, this case was done in one month. It's pretty fast. Um, here is another one, 12 months in Healthy Start. You can see before and after. You can see in this lower one how the process goes as the development of the dentition. You can see this tooth is in a rotated position. The primary tooth exfoliates. This one is captured. It is basically positioned into the arch and it provides the expansion in order to accommodate it so you can see the final result. So anyways, um, that basically um, goes through what the Healthy Start system can do for your office, can do for your patients, but most importantly, what it can do for the health of every child. So I'd like for you to take maybe a minute and a half to look at this video um, that's going to explain the digital class. And um, in... Um, Interesting enough, the ADA actually has described this digital class that we provide to our doctors, our oral physicians, as ingenious. Um, I take that as a huge compliment because it is very difficult to have the ADA um, basically give us compliments. So if you want to hang tight, um, and I know you're going to enjoy this. And afterwards, we'll provide information on how to receive your CE credits. 
So Susie, maybe I think, or maybe we'll start it right here. Have you heard of Healthy Start? Orthotain, our parent company, just celebrated 50 years of helping close to 4 million kids around the world improve their health. Through the Healthy Start Oral Appliance System, we take orthodontic approach to treating children with sleep, breathing, and airway issues. The Healthy Start Appliance System is soft and comfortable, like pillows for the teeth. Non-invasive, non-pharmaceutical, FDA cleared, American made. Our oral appliances promote natural growth and development of the dentition, but beautiful smiles are just the beginning. The Healthy Start system addresses the root cause of sleep disordered breathing, promotes nasal breathing, while discouraging mouth breathing, widens the dental arches, helps to develop the jaw, all while straightening the teeth, just like nature intended. Unfortunately, research shows that 9 out of 10 children face one or more symptoms of sleep disordered breathing, headaches, difficulty in school, snoring, bedwetting, night terrors, chronic allergies. To name a few, these symptoms can lead to lifelong health problems. The American Dental Association's new policy states that it's the responsibility of all dentists to receive education on how to assess and treat airway issues. Healthy start to the rescue. Get digital training, earn CE credits, online, at your convenience, from the comfort of your home, anywhere in the world. Want to know more? Visit www.openairwaydentistry.com or call 844-KID-HEALTHY. Don't wait. Healthy Start changes lives, and so can you. Um, well, I, I, I love this whiteboard. I think it really kind of sums up what we were talking about. And um, I, I really want to um, allow you to take a look at what we have in regard to our digital series. I am really, really um, excited to present this to you. Um, Susie's going to take over and give you some of the details. But, you know, what's so important for every single doctor is to realize that we look at what we do in our practice. We look at the patients we see. We want to help them as much as we can. So many times we just have looked at the dentition and not at the entire child. This is a point in time that dentistry will change forever. And you as oral physicians are in the position to be able to not only help your patients, provide a lifetime of better health, more permanent health improvements and basically change the dynamics of dentistry. And I realized that, you know, we all are unfortunately in business as well. We have to be able to support ourselves. And this will provide an, an amazing opportunity to not only expand your practice, but address a different type of population that you've never treated before. And I, I feel that this sleep, breathing will be the biggest thing in dentistry. And I, I've seen it, I've experienced it. Obviously, um, we put this production on in three days and we have 300 participants. You can obviously see what that dynamic is. So without any further ado, um, Susie, you wanna take over? Absolutely, thank you so much, Leslie. So I, I'm so excited about this digital education course. Um, as, as Leslie mentioned, ADA calls this course ingenious, and it really, really is. It's a six-session digital education course um, that really you can take from anywhere around the world because it is digital. Uh, but the great thing about it is that it comes with hands-on treatment of two full cases. So two full cases that include the diagnosis, appliances, the animal cases, everything that you need to treat two children come with this course, which is fantastic. Um, $3,000 voucher towards one of our destination courses. So for you and four of your staff members, you can attend um, a destination course, and we're going to give you a $3,000 voucher towards that. Um, interactive study club. So every Friday we have an interactive study club and we have a mentor coach, a provider coach that's on every single um, study club. And so you can ask your questions. These two cases that you, um, that we're handing over to you, will walk you through those two cases. Um, so the study clubs are fantastic because we not only go through these cases with you, but we actually tell you how to implement in your practice. So we talk to you about 
um, your staff members how to talk to patients, how to let the community know what you're doing and how you're helping these kids um, with the Healthy Start system. So we're going to train you on pediatric treatment, of course, of sleep disordered breathing, improper facial growth and development, development of dentition, um, screenings for sleep, breathing, and airway issues, how to increase your patient flow, and you're going to receive 18 CE credits and then 16 more when you attend the live course. Um, and the Healthy Start uh, system, or this, this class, actually complements the new ADA proposed policy on sleep-related breathing disorders. So we were talking about the ADA, as Leslie mentioned. Um, talking about this course being ingenious. Well, um, let me just tell you an, a, a testimony or um, that I received today, or actually on Wednesday, from one of our doctors. I was really excited about it, but here's what she said. Um, she said, hi, Susie, I'm really enjoying the course. Um, we've identified quite a few patients that would really benefit from the Healthy Start, um, and the office is really excited to get started. Now, keep in mind, this is a, a doctor who is actually in the course right now, so um, she's actually going through the class right now. She already has um, children that she sees can benefit from, of course, the Healthy Start system. She says, um, we put my business partner's four-year-old in the habit corrector last Friday um, because he's had swallowing issues, and we've already seen a big improvement in his eating. And then today, we started a seven-year-old with tongue thrust in the six to 12-year-old habit corrector and has been um, seeing, she, he's been seeing a speech therapist and having breathing issues for years. We're very excited to see her progress. And the mom is very motivated too. And we have three other patients waiting for the habit corrector. So it, it's kind of snowballs. You know, you have um, these parents that come in with their children and the children are, um, they're seeing improvement in their kids. And next thing you know, they're telling other parents because it's amazing once you see, once you start changing the lives of these kids, it's, it's just amazing how many um, referrals and how many more patients all of a sudden um, your practice just starts growing and growing. So it's really, really awesome. A little more information. So the course investment is $3,400, but keeping in mind with those two free cases that we're handing over to you with the $3,000 voucher that you can use for you and your four staff members, it's immediate return on investment. Um, so you can either, there's a couple of ways to, to get involved and to register for the course. You can either call, of course, or email um, 844-KID-HEALTHY. If you click the print screen um, button on your um, keyboard, you can actually take a picture of this screen, and that way you'll have all the information in front of you. But it's 844-KID-HEALTHY or contact at thehealthystart.com. You can also register electronically. If you visit www.openairwaydentistry.com, there's a register now button and you can register on a secure server and you can register immediately. Or if you want more information, you can contact me directly. And my email is right there. It's Susie at HealthyStartChild.com. We're so excited about this course and um, really, really hope that you will jump in and now's the time. You don't want to wait. Um, and this course, like, like I said, starts April the 9th. So, um, you know, get involved. And Leslie, is there anything extra that you'd like to add? Well, I, I just want to tell you, th this ability to use the digital course will let you get started right away. I mean, I'm hoping that as you spent the last hour um, listening to us, that in your mind, you've already picked out patients in your practice, or maybe it's your own child, or maybe it's your neighbor, or your niece, or your nephew, but we all know children. There is absolutely no way that you have not seen these children. Um, I I'll be in a a, a bus, I'll be on the street. I, I see these children morning and morning, noon and night. And it's everything I can do to try to contain myself. But as you know, I reach out to these kids and the moms and try to help them. I'm a mom, I would be so disappointed if someone did not take the opportunity to talk to me a little bit and maybe help me with my child that I maybe, you know, realize something was not exactly 100% or uh, maybe I just thought it was part of their personality. So it does offer such a huge benefit for you and your office. Um, I can't tell you how many parents come up. I mean, hugs, tears, saying thank you. Thank you for changing my child's life and also changing our family's life. Um, I don't know how many um, dentists have had someone come up and say, wow, doc, that was a great crown. It was the best one I've ever had. Um, this is a totally different way, and it's so exciting. Um, 
I basically work 24 hours a day. I love what I do. I love being able to help these kids. And I want to help you introduce this into your practice. And again, I, I just feel the digital course has been such a tremendous asset for doctors, not only to get the education, but to be able to talk to other providers to learn how to implement it into their practice. And most importantly, how to treat cases and have that support that you need. So again, I just, um, I, I hope you take advantage of it. I hope to see you. Um, I try to be on every one. Um, we, we just really enjoy what we do. But I think, uh, Susie, you mentioned we have a few questions. So I don't know if we have time to do that. Um, well, let's answer two questions. Um, the other questions will be more than happy to reach out to you and answer whatever you have. So Susie, you want to pick a couple questions? And Absolutely. We'll yes, yes. Yeah. Perfect. So first question from Dr. M. Infante is, can adults use it too? Great question. Absolutely. An adult can use this system, but please remember that with an adult, we have no more growth. And two, our habits are pretty ingrained. So I always say manage expectations. But I will tell you that um, from the adults I have, they're thrilled with what they're experiencing. Um, they are trying to retrain themselves, but at the same time, when they're sleeping with these appliances, it is putting them in the proper position. So it does help them and it does encourage them to breathe through their nose each and every night. It prevents the lower chin from drifting back. Um, they can actually straighten their teeth or re-straighten their teeth. So many adults have had orthodontic treatment. I always laugh. I say, have you had it once, twice, or we're working on the third time? So these appliances will not only address the habits um, of the patient, of the adult patient, but will also help to straighten their teeth, put their teeth in the proper intercuspation. It will correct overbite and overjet. Many adults have TMJ problems. It will address that as well. So absolutely. And this actually isn't a, qu a question, but it's a suggestion, and it's actually a great suggestion. Um, Dr. Welch, um, said that he strongly recommends that everyone watch the video Finding Con Connor Deegan. So um, I think that's a great suggestion. It, it, you know what? It is absolutely a fantastic one. Um, if you don't have it, we'll be more than happy to be able to provide it for you. Just reach out to us. Um, we will send you um, that link so you can watch it. Um, it is a tear jerker. Um, sometimes we play it, but it, it is kind of lengthy. Um, what I would use it as a resource is um, many times parents come in and you'll see a child that might be um, more obvious. Um, the child that's hanging from the ceiling, who can't sit still, all of that. We, we see those kids. Um, and the parent might be, you know, doesn't know what to say. Maybe they're just um, trying to make excuses for their child or whatever. Sometimes we suggest, you know what, we have a video. Maybe go home. Um, after you put your child to bed and watch this and see if you see anything that might be familiar to you with your child. And um, it, it, it obviously is quite a tearjerker, but it is an important um, video to watch just to see that. So thank you for bringing that up. It's an excellent suggestion. Let's see, there is one more. Let me see here. Um, the name of the video, I, I see a message from Ken Miller. It's called Finding Connor Deegan. And Deegan is D-E-E-G-A-N. And actually, um, Connor is from um, Illinois. Um, he's in a suburb just not too far from me. Um, his mother is absolutely fantastic. And um, it was just always a pleasure to know Connor. So um, please find it, Finding Connor Deegan. Perfect. Here is the contact information, contact at thehealthystart.com, or of course you can give us a call at 844-KID-HEALTHY, and please, please visit our website if you haven't had a chance, and um, we have a fantastic social media, and um, we'd love for you to follow us there as well, and again, um, just one more time, can't reiterate enough how much we would love to have you as a part of the digital education course. Um, you know, we, we need more doctors, and um, there's so many kids with issues with sleep and breathing issues. I mean, nine out of 10 kids are, are facing um, one or more of the symptoms of, of sleep disordered breathing. And so, you know, we really need doctors involved. So anyhow, 
let me know, give, email me, and I would be happy to give you information or um, use those resources to register. And Leslie, thank you so much. That was fantastic. And just so you know, um, you did get some um, compliments on your uh, fantastic, the fantastic information. So thank you. Oh, well, I'm, I'm so glad. I, I thought maybe I'd mention one other thing, because a lot of times um, doctors are curious, um, typically, how, um, what do we charge for this treatment? What do um, doctors typically um, charge? We, we tell them, um, on average, I've heard a fee of around $3,700 is what they charge to their patients. Um, we, if a patient has orthodontic coverage, we've never been refused. Um, and also we are now um, um, also claiming and submitting um, treatment under medical insurance as well. So um, just a couple things to think about, um, but as we said, um, an amazing nine out of 10 children. So thank you so much. Um, I can't um, appreciate you taking that time. Um, please reach out. I never not answer a call or um, answer an email. So if you have any questions, I know you have Susie. She's an amazing resource. And um, I'm more than happy as well to answer any questions. So it's late. It's Thursday night. Um, I hope you all have a happy Friday. And um, think about Healthy Start. Thank you so much. Good night. Take care.